Welcome back, everyone, for the next part of Limbus Company. In the last part, we had some fun in the Mirror Dungeon. In which case, I literally, well, um, I kind of mixed up three colors at once. The whole time I was talking about gluttony, we're talking about the yellow stuff. At one point, I even, I even called the orange stuff gluttony. Everything became gluttony. <laughs> it was a mess. It was a real mess. <laughs> but hey, at the very least, I was also able to encounter some very interesting abnormalities in there. Like the paper crane. I'm still a big fan of the paper crane. Simply because, in my mind, I see it as Tiverit. Adult Tiverit with a coffee tap, uh, coffee cup. Well, a, a little chesset and Gabor around. It's like a reversed world. Where the adults become the children and the children became the adult. It's great. It's absolutely great. I love it. <laughs> I really love it. I would love to read more of the laws behind it. It's probably not related to the free, but still. The colors are just perfect. The colors are just perfect. <laughs> Oh, and uh, yeah, in the last three, or rather in the last two parts, I was able to unlock Cut to Free. But because uh, the Mirror Dungeon and the whole tutorial took so long, I didn't really have a chance to start it yet. So, of course, in today's part, we're going to do a lot in the Unconfronting. But before we do that, there's one quick thing we have to do. After all, Every chapter we change our party a little, right? Every single time. This time around, thanks to our battle pass, we have some very interesting changes. First and foremost, yes. I can't believe it myself, but yes. We're going to give Heathcliff a chance. Now I know, I don't like Heathcliff at all, but... The battle pass gave me a very interesting ego from him that I cannot use. It's charge related. I cannot use charge stuff. But I do want to give it a try. And in order to make it work, I need a bunch of gloom and purple stuff. So yeah, <laughs> I needed to change the party accordingly in order to make it work. But technically speaking, it's usually ego does come with a little bit of purple. But practically speaking, because I have to adjust the whole party, I do need a bit of light green. So yeah, he has to appear as the seventh association one. I just needed to, to get the, the purple and the, the green stuff going. That is also the reason why I decided to bring her along, because she comes with a, a green counter dice and a green uh, third skill as well, which actually inflicts slash fr fragility as well. This is going to be very great, because we're also going to bring Fast with Orange, Light Blue and Purple. This is perfect in order to get the Centipede working, right? Totally. This is absolutely perfect to get it to work. And it comes with the same boost that I already really appreciated on her Lou. Coin Power plus 3 if she doesn't receive any damage during the last turn. She's going to be so broken. It's gonna be great, especially seeing how this is slash identity. I mean, she has two ways to inflict slash damage, which is going to get boosted by Yoshio's fragile, uh, fr where is it? There. Slash fragility, right? That's going to boost the damage from slash attacks. Those three are already working perfectly together. It's gonna be great. And as a supporter, I have both uh, Masur, as my second tank with more light blue, dark blue and some yellow that we don't really use. And of course, our boxing priest with light blue, more purple and more yellow. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be absolutely great. But as you can probably see, we still have to uptie them to level 3. I specifically refrain from doing that yet simply because I mean, we already were able to see that there was a, a story after uptying them, right? Totally. Which means, have to, I have to record it on screen. Otherwise, otherwise we're just going to miss something and I'm not entirely sure if we can actually watch it. So yeah, let's do it right now. 
I'm probably not going to do all four of them at once because that would probably take too much of our time. But I do need the one that gives us green. So heat and that's yellow. We can wait with yellow. And Ryoshu. We're going to watch Heat and Ryoshu today. And probably the other two in the next part. Yeah, let's do it like this. And of course, the prettier picture is going to get the uptime first. I mean, look at this. It's so pretty. I'm also kind of interested to see what uh, this, this whole art talk is all about. I already was able to see it a couple of times in the beginning intro, but she was talking about creating her own sword art. The meaning of art itself, the carving of the city. <sighs> it's gonna be great, right, Virajo? I'm pretty sure you're going to have one of the wholesome story in the world. And she's going to get fast as well. 3 to 7. Great. Okay. 40. It's not that expensive, lucky enough. Ah, the only downside is it got rid of our picture, but it's fine. We can still view it in the intro cutscene, right? We can still select it in the intro. <laughs> okay, identity uptime free. Let us see the cutscene. Why did he even bother staying in the seven? A curious co-worker. Okay. NM. The child was always harsh to other questions. With her snappy replies were the result of meticulous calculations, the Seven Association nevertheless took interest in the trade of herbs. Information the symmetry. Although the Seven Association specialized in gathering intelligence, it never easily shares its knowledge with others on principle. I mean, they are the ones that gather knowledge. They're not here to share it, right? In that sense, the child could have been seen as someone discreet about her info. A woman of few words, if you will. That's true. Of course, that wasn't necessarily her intention. It's far more likely that the child just needed an excuse to swing her sword. <laughs> of course, she loves fighting, right? <laughs> Watch and learn. The child lifted her weapon with an unorthodox posture and got to work. Each spot targeted and touched by her sword was peeled, cut, sliced, and strewed. Oh! Pacts. Peak art created through swordmanship. She left a lump of flesh that could no longer be recognized as a human in her wake. Okay. So, uh, so much for gathering information, huh? At the very least, she's able to protect the informations without any issue, right? <laughs> of course, it's not all about the art. It's about the art of killing itself, right? And what about Heathcliff? Are you going to bother keeping secrets? Probably not, right? Probably not. It seems like at the very least, you're trying to get the case going? Wait, there's a false one? Are they going to work together with Forst? Interesting! <sighs> I got a splitting headache. No, no, literally. I think my skull's actually about to split in half and blast off. Why is that? I don't get it. I don't understand how anyone like the writers make a living doing this torture every bloody day. It's just intuition, damn it. And sources? How about my gut feeling, huh? How am I supposed to explain that? <laughs> what? I've examined hundreds of scenes since I started working here. I've been working here for a good while too. And before this, I've seen enough of the roughs and tumbles and had more than my share of violence. After a life like that, the house and wires of a murder scene just come natural to me. It's just intuition, nothing... Is that the reason how you were able to tell what happens with the whole, uh draw thing with that one abnormality, the, the, the stone mask, guys. So you you don't actually take a good situation to the surrounding, you just see see the after effect and can quickly tell what happened. 
That's very interesting and probably not accountable. You need to prove that in order to actually make a case, but all right. <laughs> but I'm not like that armchair detective in those mystery novels. It's not like I can just figure out the whole scene and scheme from a glance. Sometimes clues get lost in the whole mess and oh, my head. Calling me a profiler, whatever that means. Forcing me to write these reports every damn day. I'm about to lose it. Oh god. <laughs> I'm not thinking of quitting though. I do love catching those smart asses off guard. Watching their overcomplicated conspiracy blowing up their faces because of some poor uneducated sort like me carving, uh, carving them with their bridges down. It's, it's just priceless. Besides, getting to meet them face to face like this before caving their skulls in is downright terapeutic. Oh, you really like that, huh? <laughs> they always wear the stupid look on their face like it didn't occur to them once that uh, we would find out. It's all quite entertaining. Though I wish... Huh? That's Sim, yeah? Yeah, he was the last of the first row personal. Off with his head then, huh? How many more have we gotten to go through? The second and third floor adds up to 30 people. Right then. Let's crack on, shall we? We've got two black reports waiting to be filled out back at the office. Do not forget about the case that was added before we departed for this assignment, Heathcliff. You have to write even more stuff. Oh, God. <laughs> There are only so many heads that I can smash before even that satisfaction begins to dull. True. I wish I had time to blow off some steam. But no, you don't have that. I mean, somebody has to write all of these reports, right? Somebody has to do it. And it is your job. It's actually really refreshing to see him with all those papers for once. He is forced to use his head, even though he doesn't want to do it. He's forced to do it. Love it. <laughs> and actually speaking, it seems like their cutscene weren't really that long on first glance. Maybe I will be able to squeeze in the other two somewhere as well, but... Nah, I would say we're going to save that for the next part. Totally. We're going to save that for the next part. Now then, chapter 3. We've already been waiting for way too long. Where is our next location? Humming along. Virch just informed us of where we will be going next. Well, everyone seems happy and energetic. One sinner reacts rather strangely. Why? And who? I mean, they should still be very happy about the whole thing that happened last one. I mean, we got the gold barrel, we won the casino, we got the stake. They should all be happy, right? The sun is almost set, leaving the bus shrouded, shrouded in dust. Hmm. Sharon is humming a song while driving. I found myself singing along in my head to that strangely familiar tune. The most beautiful of performances are born from broke and ruined things. Ironic the way the world works. Like silent orchestra! <laughs> Virtual spoke having noticed that I was looking at the driver's seat. Alas, they have not the privilege to fully appreciate the glee of their own music. Oh, how unjust that is. True. Sharon, you look like you're in a good mood today. Sharon nods. Mm-hmm. Joy brings out singing, after all. I see. Although... As far as I remember, you would often hum that song when you fell down. Sharon has no such memory. Sharon sings when she's happy. Hmm? Virgil's eyes seem to well with a subtle shade of dark. Only if she's happy? The kind of hue that would get picked right away if one wanted to express solitude as a color. But it only lasted for a brief moment. Should I decide to dismiss it as a trivial sunset playing tricks with the light? Or maybe Sharon is losing some memories? 
I mean, in this city, everyone is able to experience memory, memory loss at any point of time. I mean, there's literally a singularity for that as well. At the very least, I think there was one. Seeing how even Roland had some memories suppressed and all. The world Sharon hums now is one that lacks sound and color. She's going through a long tunnel with no exit in sight. I'm sure that's just the history of my own life that I've forgotten. Sharon and Virgilus must have had their own threat of cruel reminders. Ah, pardon me. I believe that's enough of personal stories. Dante, mm -hmm. your work is to manage your crew, not befriend the old god. But why wouldn't I? You're literally the next threat. Of course I would be interested to learn about them more about that. Especially now that Gabor is no longer around, right? <laughs> when I look at his face again, the momentary hint of sadness had fled, replaced with a faint smile. I gave him a few nods, then turned around to check on the sinners. Our bus passengers have had lifted spirits for a while now. It helped that they did what they were assembled for and secured the golden barrow for the first time. All the sinners were busy talking about their exploits in the Jacob districts. You should have seen me show that card right there. Seriously, that was a real highlight. I'm starting to consider hearing the same story for several times in a row, Rodion. So let me change the subject. Where are we going this time? Hmm, this time. We're heading to K-Corp's Nest. Oh, District 11, huh? Stop taking me to all sorts of places I've never had to thought to visit. This is the home of another great individual, and you're certain to find souvenir shops there. I always yearn for the limited edition figurine set. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, didn't it also have a restaurant chain famous for the hamburger steaks? Does it? Life has gotten much easier these days, hasn't it? Back in my marching days, all I had was a pinch of salt in my mouth. I know, right? The only food I could swallow during my voyage was canned soup that tasted like iron. Ugh. Can't wait to try the steak, right, Vyoshu? <laughs> well, imagining the variants in blood colored by region does make me salivate. Uh, I, I really can't discuss anything with you, huh? Hey kiddo, what do you want to eat? Sinclair? What is up with that face? Looking for someone to share tales with and have a, a sensible conversation, Rodia naturally turned to Sinclair. However... Sinclair? What? Gosh golly, what's wrong? He turned pale. He's also suffering from hyperventilation and tremors. It's what? Wait, how long has it been like this? Ever since Mr. Virgilus mentioned K-Corp. And why didn't you tell me earlier? Well, because he did not order me to do s- How should I order you if I didn't even notice that? <laughs> Versot? <laughs> Versot stared at me like I was at fault for not doing the obvious. Should I order you to watch everyone? Is that what you want? <laughs> I just got an upset stomach. Sorry. Are you sure? Really sure you're okay? Now that I think about it. First, I'm noticing a trend where one of us has muscular reaction to the destination that Virgilus reveals. True. Additionally, when we arrive, it turns out that the place does have a history with a person in question. True. First Gregor, now Rodion. Now the Claire's reacting? Does it have something to do with the reason we are joining the company? You just refer to the team as we. Huh? It's a part of my mission to detect the slightest of changes. As for your question, well I can't tell you the reason for recruiting the sinners in details. There'd be no point in denying that our destination and the backgrounds of each sinners are indeed related to a degree. I mean, even Sonya said that it had something to do with redemption, so of course they had to be connected somewhere. Do all Upsy snobs have some condition that makes them yap on and on about things that can be answered with a plain yes or no? 
Hysterion Proterion, what? Isn't always correct. For simply adopts the most effective method of communication with the given situation. If I is the word? It means that you're struggling to understand false because you're just too uneducated. Not that false is overeducated. Okay. Why you <laughs> Are you s Sinclair, really? Just as Heathcliff approaches force with a bad shaken in fury, Sinclair suddenly started throwing up on the floor. The bus finally quiet down after that. Okay, it's pretty clear that something is not right with him. Something is certainly not right with him. He literally threw up! He literally threw up! That's not a good sign. That is certainly not a good sign. I completely uh, forgot to read. Inspection 3-2. To everyone's surprise, we are told that our destination is Kcop's nest. The entry procedures one must go through to set foot, uh, foot in the nest are supposedly quite complicated. Is that border control? Probably. Okay, my team is already beset. Great. Don't need to change anything. Is this seriously alright though? I remember one of Virtual's rules was that we are not supposed to make the bus dirty. And he just puked on the floor. We can ignore that. <laughs> Shortly after the situation with Sinclair was dealt with. By the way, you meant the back street of District 11 when you said K-Cop's Nest, yeah? I missed pointing it out earlier since everyone got a bit excited there. I rarely must speak, if ever. I know what I said, Gregor. K-Cop's Nest is where we are going. Okay, alright. If we're entering a nest, indeed, there's an immigration process. I don't have a K-Cop visa. You ain't about to tell me everyone else got one, right? Um, wait, what? Why are you looking at me? The solution is simple. C-I. And keep a D-E-R until we preach the defense. What? In short, Cinder. <laughs> what? Ryoshu, <laughs> come on! <laughs> Whatever the eccentric operation means for Ryoshu, the Cinder have learned to stop questioning it. Uh-huh. A company as big as ours might get a free pass. Not to mention, breaking through using the method the Ryoshu suggested will take ages to be able to tell what you'd said. How badly must you underestimate a nest actively governed by a wing to say that? Oh, I see. So no one's going to take into account how much I will suffer for that cinder. Huh? What does cinder stand for? Sadly, none of our cinders bother to respond to me in any capacity. Nobody's going to explain it either. Wow, they all leave me hanging! They all leave me hanging! As Ishmael said, we will pass the immigration without needing a visa. Limbo's company has backing for shareholders of a wide array of fields. Oh, okay. Oh, do you happen to know the shareholders of HCOP then? They once personally visit our home because my younger sibling insisted upon having a red passport as a kid. Couldn't say I'm merely a humble guide who wouldn't be in the position to know such a thing. Otherwise, the question doesn't seem like one that's really worth answering. How oh, harsh. That leaves the route to the checkpoint is our concern. Through inspection means there are plenty of people looking for an easy way in, including those who had taken the pass by force. I heard several interlopers surrounding the bus. So they're trying to steal our pass? Welp, half bus will battle, right? True. If they're trying to go for our bus, we have to defend it. And then feed them to our bus as well in order to restock our fuel. Like always. So, let me just make a quick peek. At hooligan slash weakness. I think those guys are literally the same bunch as usual. But then again, it's been a while since we had a chance to fight against hooligans. So of course. Of course we're going to have some fun with this. Let's go for the easy hit. 
since we all should doesn't really clash against anybody. Yeah, let's go. Good hit. One is already down. No moral. It's just perfect. Eleven hits. Doesn't really seem like there are a lot of clashes going on. Which is good on its own. Let's go for the easy hit again. After all, this fight does have two different routes. Or rather, two different waves. Oh, he, he wasn't even able to use the full attack. He died too quickly. I think I had another one of those attacks, though. I know he doesn't. But they have to do the Rosha attack. We can certainly make use of that. Let's go for this again. I guess it doesn't really hurt to go for deep cuts twice. 14 is easy to win. And then we can go for the attack debuff. But then again, I'm not. They're probably not able to survive this. I mean, those are just hooligans, right? There's no way in hell they can survive it. This guy's not even able to survive the second hit. He's <laughs> not even able to survive the second hit. Oh god. It's gonna take a while before we get to see the whole animation. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine, though. <laughs> okay. Cock and... Cocker hop and Shaman's Cocker hops parking. What the... So she's parking. All right. Off the bus. Time to get inspected. Ah, and let me add this just in case that you're feeling inclined to your usual antics. Don't go around making a scene expecting things to go your way. Because that will not be how it works in this particular place. What's that supposed to mean? I thought his words were pretty intimidating, but despite the worries... Weaver, all visitors to Keycrop's nest open heartily. Please walk an orderly line as you enter, and stand where the instruction indicates. Okay. The menacing and interrogative atmosphere could subdue the temper of any first-time visitors, and the sinners were no exception. I could occasionally hear Sinclair sniffling, followed by Rodia and Gregor calming him down. Any of my questions were met with head shaking sideways. Look here, how nice it is to see you all stand in line and behave, like a brood of chicks on an outing. <laughs> Wait. Why are you out here too? What made you follow us outside the bus this time? True, he never did that before. Noticing my flustered reaction to an unexpected company, Virgilus opened his mouth. Because this is a nest, Dante. If one of you were to get into an unexpected trouble here, we are going to be in big trouble, Rich. Well, Dante, the responsibility will be a bit too heavy for you to bear alone. When Virgil puts it like that, it sounds as if he was trying to say you're not reliable enough to be sent without supervision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we aren't. <laughs> but I knew it would be wiser to keep this to myself. I mean, let's be serious. Alright, let's be serious. As long as he's around, at the very least we can confirm that they're going to behave themselves. Especially Heathcliff is going to behave themselves. After all, Virgilus doesn't have any issues just beating the heads in if they try to step out of line, right? Code purple, free free. We wait our turn to undergo the checkpoint's official interview, with Virgilus and Ishmael instructing us on the process. He is hoping that we'll pass. What's that supposed to mean? Of course we're going to pass, right? Virgilus is around. There's no way we could mess something up with him around. <laughs> They're going to die if they do. <laughs> They're literally all about to die if they get, if they do anything. They're all dead instantly. <laughs> it's Virginals, Red Eye. He can kill in seconds, right? <laughs> Lines is moving quickly. It'll be our turn in about ten minutes at most. Mm. Will all thirteen of us need to answer the immigration question? They won't be able to understand Manager Dante, so what should we do? True, they can't hear me at all. Ishmael seems to have the habit of speaking quickly and being more inquisitive when she got anxious. I was just about to get to that. 
Listen up. The K-Corps official will only ask very simple questions to the passengers in this line. And your answer will be similarly concise. When the border official asks about the nature of your visit, say, I'm here for business on the behalf of Limbus Company. Please refer to my work visa, nothing else. Limbus Company is going to be enough. Just say Limbus Company, show your ID. It's gonna be easy. Just that. It doesn't, even, it doesn't even seem like you need to say your own name. <laughs> Remember this exact phrase so that you can recite it word for word. I take care of the rest. So you just have to prove that you aren't here to cause trouble. So say nothing else. If even memorizing that is too much of a burden, I suggest that you keep your mouth shut. You can just present your employee cards instead. Ah, that's perfect. Keep quiet and don't cause trouble, right? Easiest task in the world. I sneakily mumbled a sarcastic remark. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was worried that Foss might read me out, but thankfully, Virginus was idly staring off into space, sparing me from his scattered commentary. Now, next up. If you have a question, make sure you first ask yourself if it's actually meaningful, then quietly raise your hand. Several hands were lifted, including mine. Rodion? Well, since this trip is for business, we can carry our weapon, yeah? Correct. Next, seriously? We can openly carry our weapon through the border? Okay. <laughs> then, Craig's creepy crawly arm and Dante's chitchy clock head is going to get a pass too, right? That should be the case. For your reference, our mentions head counts as a prothesis rather than a weapon, which means it would be approved even if we had or rather if we, we had a tourist visa instead. Power to revive notwithstanding. Ishmael took the role of modest student and entered in virtual stage. It feels like something changed about Ishmael's attitude since the casino job. She seems to have decided to take matters into her own hands after I betrayed her expectations of my capability as- Alright, I did disappoint her. I see. <laughs> Precisely. Gregor and I put our hands down at the same time. No more question about our hands and arms, right? Right at, yeah, heads and arms. And Ryoshu, put out the cigarette before you speak. I didn't raise my hands. Virginus was doing his best to ignore Don's arm stretched skyward. But he finally caved and gave the woman with a adamantly raised hand a chance to speak. Fine. Don, what's next? His eyes even glow! What? <laughs> Why are your eyes glowing? Okay, uh, for what purpose does that barrier of glass serve? Following Don's finger, your attention was drawn to the glass wall that stood in the middle of the building. On the other side of that clear dividing wall were countless people waiting in line. Uh, that the line is slow to crawl. People are sitting on the floor waiting for it to move. Looks like they've been here for quite some time. Oh, there are many armed guards as well. Three times as many compared to this side. Okay, most of the class wall you find inside the buildings are there for safety reasons. Well, simply put, that line is for backstreet folks. Each nest handles immigration differently, but wherever it may be, it's super duper hard to get into another hest without a proper visa, just so you know. Why do you think those bullies shunned us when we tried to reach the checkpoint? They wanted our visas so that they could enter the nest. A problem we are not in our power to resolve. True. However, that answer didn't satisfy Don. Whether it was the fault of the gloomy and oppressive atmosphere of the area beyond the wall, or the disturbance happening in there, I couldn't say. Manager, it's our turn now. Okay. Huh? Alright. <laughs> our line moved at such a quick pace that we barely had time to chat before it was our turn to answer the official's question. Remember, when you are asked about the purpose of your visit, we are here for work, Limbus Company. Show the card, nothing else, right? 
Remind me one more time and I will show you Sangria to you and the official whatever. Sangria? Uh huh. Despite Ishmael's worries, our inspection was smooth sailing. Please state your affiliation and purpose of visit. Uh, I've come from Limbus Company. On business, of course. Here's my employee card. All checked out. Next. From Limbus Company. Business reasons. Take a look at my card and all that. All checked out. Next. Okay, that goes quickly. After our first sin approved who we worked for, it was a breeze for the rest of us to follow, especially since we're all beside each other. True. The official asked the same question in the same dry tone, took a courtesy glance at our face and employee card. Though based on the speed, it seems more like customary gesture rather than an actual look over. Then let each sinner pass. Well, at the very least, go smoothly, huh? Something amiss over there. Hmm? The glass wall standing between us and them was thick enough to block out sound. It was hard for us to tell what was going on through the wall. However, I could see what was happening unambiguously. Someone with cuffed hand was being dragged away by security. He's already bleeding though. And a small child was crying next to them, clearly scared and confused. <sighs> we shouldn't bother. I don't know what happened, but I guess someone broke a taboo again. Taboo? Yeah, sure. Those impulsive vandals and the audacity to break the taboo of not stuffing enough cash in the right people's pockets. Am I right? Are you mocking me right now? Huh? What? I thought you didn't care. I thought someone's nicks are in the twist, huh? Willa was distracted by Heathcliff loudly celebrating his first successful tease on Ishmael. Our usual suspect sprang forth at her least expected moment yet again. Huh? Suspect? Please state your affiliation and purpose of visit. Don? I come to liberate the weak and powerless. What? An emotion is expressed for the first time on the checkpoint's official face. Flabbergasted. <laughs> what? They looked up at Don with a face screaming that it was flabbergasted. Release them at once. Can you not see that they are suffering? What? Please state your affiliation and purpose of visit. He doesn't listen at all though. <laughs> the official ignores her demand and parodes the same question. Don, come on. At the while, Don was getting more upset by the minute. And then... Hmm? I'm looking through the transparent wall again. I saw the desperate child mouthing a scream at the man, dragged away in handcuffs. The... Daddy? Ah... That's... Probably... Not good. Yeah, that's certainly not good. Don, what are you doing? If you're unwilling to take actions, then I shall myself. What? Oh. Code purple. Code purple. Violence of Taboo K-185 on site. Requesting Trompo City, whoever that word it is called, unit. Repeating. Requesting other units. Varying away from inquiry like a broken record, the official spoke an intimidating immune response to the radio. Don? Attention all personnel. Code purple. Code purple. Circular hall 2. Inspection boot 14. Again. Trompo... Trompo seat look at... Okay. Difficult words. Difficult words. <laughs> Blaring serene, accompanied by the perplexed announcement. All the while, thick metal gates shut around us. Great! Just great! Everyone is a panic! Don! <laughs> Should have smashed a skull in and carried it in a body sack, eh? Huh? I doubt that would have made much of a difference. Trombo, Loiko, I believe they're referring to. Relates of white blood cell, respectively. Ah. 
It must be them. Fitting for K-Corp, I would say. Looking in the direction Faust indicates, we all saw what she meant. Security forces wearing menacing uniforms were staring at us. Ah, and that explains why we had those security guards in the mirror dungeon, right? Because of Don! It's all because of Don! <laughs> it's just all because of Don! That is why they were there! I see! Taboo! Free fall! Our dear Don, intolerance for injustice, rears its troublesome head again. Armed staff of K-Corp surround us on all sides. All the while, Virgilus watches us with his arm crossed, very disappointed. Upset at our repeated failure to behave, he's a very disappointed father figure right now. And we all love that. <laughs> oh, God. God damn it, Don. We just had to show our pass. It could have been resolved so peacefully. <laughs> okay. I've gotten used to this sort of situation. But it looks pretty serious. Yeah, look at them. They're still in the panic. <laughs> Indeed, we violated the taboo of the wings after all. It's not like anyone was hurt, right? Can we just talk this through? Force looks straight into my face. Huh? For Force to face someone directly when she is usually staring into empty space as she speaks can only Kate one indicates one thing I mean. I must have said something incredibly frustrating. What? No matter the wing. Configuration of the taboo means... A loud explosion left on dismembered when she stood. Well, that's one way to kill the girl. That lethal measures can be taken against the violator without warning. Ah, great. It looks like Border Control isn't willing to forgive us until they dismember the rest of the sinners. But they already killed Don! They just need to, to kill Don, right? Armed security staff are surrounding us on all sides. But we didn't do anything! Look how angry he is! You never cease to surprise me. Uh huh. You managed to wring out the last drop of expectations I had left for you! <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm keeping out. Pin the whole thing on her, or take responsibility, or whatever. Ah. I thought your company asked to handle the situation that our mancha can do alone! True, you did say that! I came with you to take care of inevitable problems. Not having a, a pissing session in the wind! Ah! <laughs> Virgilus casually pushed his way through the line of armed guards and leaned against the wall. Are you serious? They let, let him just... But then again, he does have the, the title of Red. They must know that as well. <laughs> he then crossed his arms as if to, to further drive home that he remains a spectator. Oh great, Virgilus! Perfect job! <laughs> Thank you for coming along! <laughs> this is so helpful! This is very helpful! And it's probably the same guy, right? Yeah, it's exactly the same guy. Okay then! Ooh, struggle, huh? And the 20 defense again, of course. I'm just gonna inflict some tremor, I would say. The 9-9 is gonna be a bit troublesome. Actually speaking, if they use tremor against us. It would be quite nice for our Tremor team, because that would allow us to gain our Tremor quicker. Huh. Nevertheless, this card is currently not an option. Let's just go for... Intuition for now. Yeah, Intuition usually is always a good thing. Okay. Seems like we lost that Clash, but it's still fine. There we go. Good hit for everyone. Ooh, struggle. That's good. Let's go for a void. 12 a hit. 18. That's a free hit. I don't need to go for the counter. Of course. 27 is going to do enough to kill, hopefully. And then I'm going to go for the strong hit. Since we do need to do a lot of damage around here. And for change, I'm actually able to see the... 
the full hits. He literally fights with a piece of paper. He's fighting with a piece of paper that he scatters around the battlefield. Now that is the dedication, right? That is clear dedication. Okay. Warm up. Flick for Tremor. Go for the green hits. That's probably not going through, but we can try. And two times deep cuts. I don't think she received any damage, so of course she's going to do a lot of damage. But then again, wait a second. That boost is only on the third skill, right? And she currently doesn't have access to that skill. But it's still fine, right? It is still fine. Okay, got to stack on that guy. Don't think... Okay, we got another stack on the second guy. And... Another one is dead. Perfect. Just perfect. Let's go for a weak hit. Bite with a stronger hit because he has an 11. Can we do anything about this? Let's go for the weak hit again. Double red. Let's go for the guard one. It's not going to trigger it, but I can't use up my my blue card. At least not now. Not like this. Okay, that's a good hit. That's my Ryoshu! No way you can win against her! Look at her go! Especially with the attack debuff. Oh god. Great job, everyone! Now we just need to kill them one more time. Okay. It's not very likely to happen, but we can try. I need this. Lock it off. And then this. Or should I go... No, I have to do it like this. Otherwise, I won't be able to get the, the discard. The correct discard. And the light blue is strong enough to win. Yes, of course, of course. Should I go for the light tap? 11, 12. Might be better for me to go for... 18. Yes, 18 is better. And of course another rupture. Another clash win rupture. And the free hit with a takedown. The tech down is certainly going to be very helpful for us, right? Everyone is going to love that. Look at her go! Crushed! Just crushed instantly! Sure, the is so freaking strong! <laughs> Especially if you get the, the inside free going, then it's very important. That's why you need to be very careful with books. You want to get the free over there. It has the best block effect. And it's able to boost up her level 1 skills to level 3. You see the coin power? It's usually plus 1, but if you have 3 inside, it's actually quite powerful to have. 33 for level 1. It's great. Absolutely love it. <laughs> okay, that's a free hit. Then we go for the red stuff. 48, 12. And 27! Yeah, that should certainly be enough to finish them all off. There we go! Wasn't even able to win against that. Another attack down. And staggered. Well, goodbye! There we go! Are you really just gonna watch from there? You won't sway me with that look, manager. I'm nothing more than a guide that none pays heed to. It would be impertinent of me to brandish my weapon here. Well, to meddle one final time, K-Corp's singularity takes the form of healing bullets that restore most wounds in the blink of an eye. I suppose it could be compared to that abilities of yours. Wait, what? <laughs> Completely ignoring my feeble plea, not that they could hear it, k cop security guards closes in on us. Oh great! So that means they're all coming back alive and fighting again! Ha ha ha! Verboten! 
Oh no! They start to speak even more German. <laughs> this is gonna be bad. This is gonna be really bad. <laughs> but nevertheless, I just uh, I just saw the time. I don't think we have time for another fight. You know what? I'm going to make a cut right here in the next part. We are probably going to have to fight against even more security around here until they finally calm down. Which is going to take a very long time, seeing how they can also heal, just like us. <sighs> if Virgilus would help us out, it could be resolved so quickly, but he's just refusing to do so. <laughs> Nevertheless, I hope you guys had fun in today's part. And see you in the next part. Until then! Bye-bye!